This is the Reflector Reflections podcast. My name is Annie. Join me as we journey around the world talking with fellow human design reflectors as they experiment and navigate their unique design. Today's beautiful conversation is with Trisha. Trisha is a fellow 5-1 reflector and also a spiritual teacher, intuitive medium, clinical hypnotherapist, animal telepath, writer, and podcast host of the podcast Charmed Life. Welcome, Trisha. Thank you, Annie. So excited. I feel like it's been lifetimes coming, even though we haven't, it hasn't been that long since we've technically known one another, but it just kind of eased into the warm bath of friendship, didn't we? Yes. <laughs> I feel that way. <laughs> that's, uh, I love how you say that because that's that's how it kind of feels, the ease and grace of when we we get together and we can just like flow in and flow out when we need to. Yeah, we're both in a reflector group on Facebook and I love just going through there and reading everyone's comments because it feels good. And I told my husband that and he goes, it's like you're your own race of beings. And so when you connect, it's like really familiar and you feel it. And he's a projector. So of course he dialed it down to that. (laughs) That's really true. It's like we're a part of our own little people and our own little subspecies. Yeah. Because, well, we are, we are very different. And the more we get into it and the more we learn about human design, we realize how different we are. Yes. You know, that difference thing is interesting. Um, I have a a friend who's a human design reader and she has said to me a couple of times, uh, she's like, oh, do you just like feel like, wow, I'm so special. And I'm like, no, because the second my ego gets a hold hold of it, I don't think special. I think weird, lonely, different, sad, disappointed. (laughs) You know, (laughs) my ego doesn't interpret it as like king, precious, wonderful. It's like the other way around. I'd be probably because of the the not self theme being disappointed. (laughs) Yeah. And having spent so long, probably conditioned. Um, yeah. And I guess that brings me into when did you find human design or how did human design find you? Oh, gosh. Don't you love everyone's origin stories? Because they're so like, they're interesting. And you've probably, even though we don't initiate, we've kind of initiated, you've introduced people into it. And like two years down the line, they're like, oh, my gosh, you're the one who told me. And uh, yeah, actually, that friend I was just talking about, who's a reader now, I introduced her to human design and and mine was, I think 2018. So I think it's only been about four years, something like that, maybe 17, four or five years. And um, it was actually someone who was of my my assistant slash like a, a mentee. And she had brought someone to one of my classes that I held in person. And we were hanging out afterward, just chatting. And it was like a, it was like a, a hypnosis guided journey with your spirit guides, super, you know, like out there kind of thing. And so this, this friend of hers was, is very, you know, sp- a big spiritual explorer. And she's like, what's your human design after we were hanging out? And I was like, what, who, what? And so uh, she looked it up. She looked up my friends first and she's like, see, you're a generator and blah, blah, blah. And was talking about it. So I saw like their two charts and then she looked up mine and she goes, whoa, you're a reflector. And I was like, okay. And she goes, see, these are all of your energy centers. These are your chakras. They're all open. And I was like, I'm not a person. (laughs) That's the way it smacked me in the face. (laughs) And I was immediately disappointed. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was about it. But then as I do, as I do with this i mean i already been (laughs) open in my spiritual you know my i already had my spiritual awakening one of one of them of course one of the millions that we go through in our life and i was like okay well if it's useful then there's got to be a positive purpose for it i'm not designed poorly (laughs) you know what i mean i'm not designed broken and so that was it but it is a little more challenging when you're starting experiment with your strategy and authority. Oh, good. What's my strategy? No strategy. (laughs) What's my authority? No authority. What? (laughs) Wait, wait. Yeah. Oh, thanks. That's, that's helpful. You know, but yeah, no, I, uh, and some people reframe that now they say that your authority is lunar authority, which I find interesting. You know, Ra Uruhu just said, you have no inner authority and you have no strategy, you know? Yeah. It's just waiting. It is the lunar. We have mm-hmm. to wait. We have to go through all of those gates and we have to, it's time. Our and inner you know, authority essentially is time. It's, time. it's synchrony. Need. I like to think of it as synchrony, you know, yeah. because the moon is synchronized, even though she technically is 
um, faithful, but she's always different. Isn't every time that she is waxing crescent a totally different waxing crescent? It's going to be different. It's going to have a different quality of luminescence. It's going to have a different shape to how much she's showing. Like you can't really pin her down. It's a paradox really, but um, yeah, I like to think of it as synchrony. And I, you know what? I remember being in like high school, we were in like a little astronomy lesson and talking about the moon and it like the way she, it's it's a synchronized rotation and i just loved that and i had to memorize it because i didn't for some reason it just like lit me up <laughs> i was like i love that because <laughs> she's always showing you the same face of the moon but it always looks different too oh anyway i love her <laughs> disappointment you know i can really relate to that finding out the disappointment because i was literally shocked like i i I think I've, I've spoken about it before. I went on a bit of a three-day bender of sort of crying and a bit oh. angry. And a bit, you know what I mean? Like it was like uh, I was going through all of the emotions when I found out and, and disappointment was definitely one of them because I'm just like, what does this mean? Yeah. <laughs> what does this mean? And it was harder for me and it might have been the same for you because we found out a little bit later in life, I suppose. Mm-hmm. So we've had so much conditioning. Mm-hmm. from our past did you when you when you found this out did you kind of revisit you know young Trisha teenage Trisha 20 year old Trisha and just go through the the process of giving yourself a bit of grace can you share with us yeah for sure and you know I, I visit all of those hers all the time <laughs> but yes well I, I would say I also got it a little bit l- I mean, it's the rest of my life, but later into my spiritual awakening, like opening up to my metaphysical and mystical, um, and, you know, embracing that and practicing it in those regards, uh, which of course, you know, like human design is, it, it's even more than that, but it's definitely a metaphysical science because we're talking about something that is, be, that is not confined just to the physical. But what you, the way you're talking about that three-day bender, that was how I received the uh concept of being an empath and you know like we're that's so common to us who are in these you know kinds but i was completely not in any kind of spiritual uh, metaphysical or any kind of conversation or community prior to the time that i awakened to it which i was um how old 39 and before that i was i mean people used to call me mystical but i was like what are you talking about i'm basically a scientist you know i wasn't though but you know (laughs) but i i was into deepak chopra and eckhart tolle and wayne dyer um but that didn't even you know i didn't even open up to that kind of thought and meditation until my late 20s before that i had a period of nothing and then before not really nothing but you know before that it was religion in my childhood and up until about age 20 which i took my i went into religion on my own i rebelled as a five (laughs) against my family and took myself to church starting at age 11 so anyway i had never been really exposed to the word empath and then when i was that was i before i even like heard the psychic telling me that's how i learned about it what the what the word empath meant i was bawling like it was already my energy was recognizing it and saying you can you can start to let go of this and i guess you know with a reflector all our centers being open open to conditioning that's essentially what we mean by the word empath is mm-hmm. open to conditioning and i have been my client work now been experimenting and and observing that 100% of the time, if the emotional center is open, they identify as an empath. And then other times, if they have the identity center open, then that's also, or just, you know, some openness in the body, especially, but 100% of the time with that emotional center, they're an empath. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, that's what, so that's what, that I, it, I, well, it was actually when I received it, because it was so much later into my deconditioning, let's call it that, right? Mm then i was able to add that to it and get it actually made things a lot more practical for me which i think is great as a spiritual if we will guidance although rauru said he was not a spiritual person (laughs) um yeah i I find it to help things to become very practical and uh less emotionally loaded yeah i was going to ask you about that um if obviously where you are in life now with the gifts that you have and I find that all the reflectors that I've spoken to or we share, we're all very highly sensitive beings. We're very empathic. We're very, and, and even if we're not aware of it or we're still in a, in a more physical world, there's a part of us that's just naturally like this. The open centers, we can't help ourselves. Information just comes in and out of us. And I think even 
other types that have these open centres, it's still very much the same. So I was going to ask you, so I'm glad that you led into that of has this been a part of your life always or did it come to you later? Which part of it? My, your my psychic abilities. And, psychic abilities. Yeah, well, yeah. It, well, it has been with me always, but my but my mind blocked it as an awareness in, in certainly the word psychic or medium or anything until I was about 39 when I had that opening. Mm. However, um, I've always communicated with animals and just assumed that other people were just they didn't like animals that much. That's why they didn't regard what they were listening to hearing from the animals. You know, they just, oh, they just don't. And I, that's OK. Not everyone has to like animals. Um, I had imaginary friends when I was a kid. And those were spirit guides who are still with me. Mm -hmm. And in religion, I channeled, I um, was clairvoyant and I was mediumistic and I gave prof prophetic messages and it was all able to fit within the religion because I went, I found myself in Pentecostal and, you know, a charismatic Christian religion. So it all fit in there. It just, uh, every time I picked up a mediumistic message, I would just, Jesus would have to stand in front of it in order for me to yeah, <laughs> accept right. it. <laughs> Yeah. So, and yeah, I've always, uh, and then when I was like in my twenties and thirties and I worked in hospitality, I was a bartender. I would tell my, I would tell my manager, there's going to be a fight. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, okay. I was like, I didn't know. I was like, I can feel it. And he's like, what do you mean you can feel it? And I said, okay, maybe it's because, and I was like, him, 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 him. And he's looking at me. He's like, he's just drinking a beer. And I'm like, no, he's about to break that bottle, start hitting someone. And I just explained it because I did come up with a violent uh, home. I was like, it's just, it's like, a, it's just instinctive. It must be, mm. and, you know, animals can sense that. And, and um, so, yes, but me having it full on, like then making it into a skill, making it reliable, uh, crafting it and honing it into something refined and beautiful. That didn't start until I had a metaphysical or spiritual awakening. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And as you said, it was like a bender for me with finding <laughs> human design. <laughs> and one of the many, one of the many benders that we're going to have in your life. So I love that you also said that before, because it's like we have so many spiritual awakenings throughout our time. And, and I anticipate that there's going to be more, mm -hmm. but it's how we deal with it, isn't it? It's how, it's how we kind of like process it now. And I think once we're awake and open to things, we can kind of just go, this is what it is. And don't fight against it as much. So I think that's what happens when we have these really big ones to start with because we're kind of resisting, we're trying to fight it instead of allowing it to flow through. It's a story of a reflector's life. If you just yeah. allow it to actually just wash through you. Oh, and you know what's so awesome. wild is right before, like a week before I learned about human design, I had an astral dream. I had an astral projection dream. And they sh literally showed me how my energy works and they showed me the reflector aura and i had not heard those words and it actually i didn't put it together until probably six months after learning about you know be, you know learning about it because i didn't understand it for a while or didn't like totally get the pieces and they gave me this dream where i was there was someone who was visiting me who was a kind of a nasty person and this person was saying come with me come with me come with me let's go do this thing and i didn't want to do it and they showed me taking in her her like dark murky green energy and like sucking it into my energy and putting it in my energy. And they said, but that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to taste it and let it go, taste it and let it go taste the tree and then taste the this and taste the that. But you're not supposed to suck it in and, and hold on to it. And that's when you get sick, basically. I was like, oh, that makes sense. So that was, bef that was a few days before I learned about human design, which is pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> And it is cool because that's a really that's a really good example of exactly how it works, isn't it? Like coming from someone who has been sick recently, it's like when you absorb too much energy from not savory people or just bad burn ourselves out as reflectors, we get sick. And then you can look back and go, that that was those those lead ups to that. That's what that's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just go, oh, okay. No. I get it now. I see it now. How can I do better now that I know I can do better? Mm. And you know, we'll still make the mistake another time. I, that's okay. I have to give. I have to give myself grace now. <laughs> to give myself grace to future Trisha, who's going to do it wrong again. <laughs> that's that. And we were just talking before about that five one, the five one in us. Sometimes we just have to. We like we, you're saying that before um, off air. You like to have that structure, but then every now and then we just have to buck buck the the trend of it and just rebel. It's that heretic nature of us. So talk to us about your five one and your exploration into, into your fifth line. Yeah, it's uh 
awesome in a lot of ways. In most ways, it's awesome, and there and the shadow is there, and and I'm I'm currently in a in a place where I'm transitioning, and I'm going to be taking on a new producer role, and <laughs> and I'm like, but it's, it's like first first of all, like the cycle I, I that the process began three weeks ago, and it's not going to even really start. Even though the process and the conversation started, it's not going to come until like at least a week. So I was like as a reflector, I'm like, well, when things slow down, I know that it's because I get another month to make sure that I bring the right me to the to the conversation. But yeah, I'm like sitting with this energy going, okay, make sure that, you know, you're, you're going to be projected on. And I'm like, oh, but they're so right. I can do all of it and fix all of it. <laughs> I'm very excited about it because they're right. But at the same time, you know, I'm like, oh, let me not get disappointed because I also have gene key 19 and three positions in, in my hologenetic profile with gene keys and the uh, shadow frequency of that is codependency, which I'm like, does every reflector have gene key 19? Because I don't even know how to be a reflector without being codependent as a shadow frequency. Uh, but it is really awesome because, and I have, without even having human design knowledge, I, I already started to navigate in my, as I mature, to believe neither the hype nor the criticism, you know, believe neither the, the, I, I use, I use the proje positive projection as commodity to, uh, let, th let them, let me help them. And then, but I have to kind of like, it's like, I learned a long time ago, let's say, let's take with like my one-on-one -on -one sessions and I have a podcast and people show up and they go, oh my gosh, oh, I'm so excited, blah, 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 you know, and I don't reject it because they're having a positive experience and they're opening up to this session. So I don't take it as it's definitely my ego has nothing, has nothing to do with it. They're projecting onto me, but I go, Oh, thank you so much. So I, I, I don't reject the compliment because that feels good to no one anyway. And I just say, per, you know, I just go, good, we can use this. And then I also try to step out of the way and let spirit, let integrity use it rather than me because, and then I also, because I have a podcast and a YouTube channel, especially the YouTube channel, I have to also not uh, be too disappointed by the by the negative projections because that's, you know, YouTube is a shit show. Yeah. <laughs> People love to be on their worst behavior and just their pain is just projecting out if someone is having any kind of remote uh, semblance of positivity somehow YouTube really, you know. So that's what I, I do. I get excited by the positive projection but I kind of, I also am, I'm in the audience with them. I'm like, yes, this thing that we are creating is going to be awesome. And yet at the same time, I realize they don't know that I'm in the audience and that I'm just a, a player. I'm, I'm kind of hoping to co-create the projection field with them. Yeah. I really love, I love that. I love that also what you were saying there before that when it's projected onto you, even the whole, I'm really excited instead of you kind of like magnifying that or amplifying it back, you kind of just... I kind of get softer is yes. what I try to do. Yeah. And I, I actually get a little, I try to get vulnerable and humble. And so I go like, thank you, because I, I'm honoring mm -hmm. what they're giving. And it's that I want to honor the gift that they're giving and just highlight that. So I try to just appreciate that. I appreciate what they're giving and their intention because uh, it doesn't have anything to do with me. It has to do with, and this is also before I knew human design or before I knew 5-1, uh, spirit I channeled, you know, I channel a lot. I channel, that's my fundamental thing that I do. But I channeled a lot of information about a un the universal law of resonance. And I didn't read anybody else talking about this, but it's essentially the universal law of resonance is you can only experience anything if you also are it. So I was telling like a friend, I was like, he was in a new relationship. They were just dating and he's like, oh my gosh, I'm an anxious attacher. So I need to calm myself down. So I don't like move too fast or get too excited. And I said, no, just realize that anything that you project onto her is she's beautiful, she's smart, she's whatever. You can only recognize it because of the universal law of resonance, meaning you are that as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I try to focus on anyway. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I, I just try to let it be a commodity yeah. rather for all of us. That's, that's what beautiful. I, that's how I feel about it. And I love investigating. Oh my mm. gosh. I mean, as a kid, that's that's what I was doing. I mean, I would get on a tear with music or books or films or um, 
learning about different cult uh, kinds of churches and, you know, cult investigators. Oh, I love learning about different kinds of serial killers too. Cause I'm like, Oh, how their minds work. That's so messed up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was uh, just the last couple of days and I was sitting there and I found myself like giddy, like a little girl. Cause I was like, um, going back into another deep dive of study with human design and I was looking at all the intuitive areas and things like that in in, our, in charts and looking at psychic connections and stuff like that, trying to find all of our clairs, all of that kind of intuitive stuff. It's just fascinating to me. And I found myself just like giggling like, like a little girl <laughs> and I said, oh, I love this, you know, and it was literally like, oh, and I thought, wow, I just I love to study, you know, it was like, and I just honoured that moment in me and I just sort of thought, yeah, you do. You really do, you know. <laughs> and the same day then my girlfriend sent me one of those memes that has um, Hermione from Harry Potter coming and just throwing the book down. Like, oh, yes. you know, when, did you say, have you seen that meme? I think I did. And yes. she said, this is you. And I went, that is so me. And there might have been a time in my life where I was kind of embarrassed about that nerdish aspect of myself, but now I love it. Yeah. Oh, you just I get to it. taste so many things. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's the it, thing. So yeah, I make it, it as a reflector. It's like, I mean, yeah, you just are tasting the depths of it and finding more and more and more to taste. And it's just amazing. And then do you get your fill of a subject for a while? But then you're just like, mm, tummy is full. <laughs> yeah. And then I've got to change gears and go and do something else. Mm -hmm. And again, it's um, when I first found human design, I was always, well, I was at that point in my life where I was becoming, I couldn't, I couldn't be structured like I used to be because I'd come out of burnout, I suppose. Like looking back, that's exactly what happened. Stopped living my life. I had to stop living my life as a generator. And all of a sudden I couldn't, I couldn't finish something. I couldn't complete things because I'd just, okay, I'm done with that now and move on to the next thing. So I felt very wishy-washy, completely open head center, no gates, woo. <laughs> and I guess a part of me kind of, was a bit hard on myself about that like oh why can't you finish this or you know why can't you do that and now it's just like and all the meditations I've done and the and the channeling I've done as well it's just like that's who you are Annie that's yeah. that's your superpower to be able to sample and taste and keep going and and then share just those tastes and experiences with the world so it's changing changing the narrative of our life isn't it it's like changing the story instead of being hard on ourselves to going, this is a beautiful, beautiful gift to have. And, you know, the, the, the uh, popular, um, I don't know, advice in building social media, building a brand and everything is niche down. And I'm like, yeah, niche off. I can't, I can't. <laughs> isn't this niche enough? Fairies, angels, animals. Like, I mean, <laughs> isn't that... <laughs> Isn't that weird enough? <laughs> but there's no way I could be just one of those things. Oh, put that on a tote bag. Niche <laughs> off. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that just came through right now. Yeah, I love that I love that one. Someone's going to jump on that. <laughs> yeah, that's someone who's going to, and you're welcome, world, whoever does branding coaching. You could say, are you sick of being told to niche down? Well, tell them to niche off. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true because it's, yeah, I, I actually would be very interested to to know if a reflector has successfully maintained one area of interest for like a very long time. I don't know. Are In, they a Virgo? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they, they, it's not that we can't because we can do so many things and we shouldn't <laughs> judge ourselves, but it's like, ooh, that would be tricky. Yeah. Are they in their not self theme? <laughs> you know what I mean. You'd sort of think, "Ooh, is is that healthy for us?" I don't. I don't. Anyway, I don't know. Yeah, is it? it I guess. And the, you know, for me, then it's like, well, and when am I ever going to finish a book? Because I have like three books started, and the, <laughs> I mean, I can. The, the way that I can actually finish things usually is to well, to create a structure as we were talking about, like actually be a discipline to become the disciple of whatever it is that it, uh, I mean, it may still have to take a break now and then, but I have to just channel it because that's the only way that I will stay stimulated. And the, you know, because if I'm channeling one frequency, then the open head center doesn't have to <laughs> get taken too far off. So, yeah, but you know, we can, we can do, we can accomplish goals though. I mean, mm -hmm. not that the goals are even that, that important, but 
in hindsight, there are goals that are accomplished. Yeah. Have you, have you sort of, um, tracked your transits? Have you, have you done that experimentation on yourself to be able to follow, follow the transits through a couple of lunar cycles? I no, I, I haven't, like, I haven't been able to find the right, uh, I don't know. Do you use an app for it? Like to find an app that is helpful enough to it. That is something I want to do. And, and like, cause I haven't been able to find an app or some kind of charting that will help me to also project to be like, okay, on, you know, next Tuesday at this time is really better to not schedule that thing. That's like so bright and shiny and active. It's better to schedule it you know, a nap under a pile of kitties. Uh, like, is that is that how you can do it? Because that's what I'm suspecting you can do. <laughs> I've done it both ways. I, when I first started doing it, I had the intention, my intention was to do exactly what you said okay. and it didn't work out. It, <laughs> it was just like, still work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> spoiler alert, it never works out to plan because there's so many other variables. Yeah. And so I went back and did it then the opposite way the opposite way and I I didn't I I tracked how I was feeling without Mm -hmm. knowing anything and I found that that is the best way to do it because you're you're out of your head you're actually in your body because when we when we're watching something we're watching the gates change and 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 everything and we we get up here in our head and so then we can actually create create things that aren't there Mm. this is just my own personal opinion so I did it that way and then after I'd done that for a couple of months and I had my my diary I then noticed themes I noticed how I moved and it Mm -hmm. was the same every month Ah. and that's when I knew I was onto something so that's then when I started um, tracking it against the transits and so I was watching as the gates changed and as my gates got defined and as I went through the manifesto and the generator and the projector and I'm like oh and you know that that we were talking about it in the a lady mentioned it in a group uh, yesterday actually about that she's married to another reflector and she's noticed that a certain time of the month they have arguments oh. and you can actually see all of this beauty because it takes us a whole month to really feel who we are outside mm-hmm. of everybody else that's the only way we know it's like I think I put up a little video and it's just like if you actually slowed down time or sped up time sorry a whole lunar month that's us in one day so yeah. It's a magical thing, <laughs> and that's why time is our inner authority. Okay. Wow. Well, how do you? What do you use as the you know to let you know what the when the gates are and when they're transiting? Like, what kind of application or or text? Do you use for um, so when I first started, I was just using an app. I think it's a human design app. It just has okay. um, a lady told me yesterday actually with the free version, you okay. can look seven days ahead. Um, I think it's $5 to pay for it. So you can see, I, I use genetic matrix now because obviously I have the pro version cause I do readings. Um, and it has like months. Oh, you, okay. Good. You yeah. can have all your chart printed out. It has all that's specific good. for I you. Ha- the app I have only goes like a day or something like that. So oh. that's why. And I, so it's, yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Cause what I have done it's just notice, you know, just like moon, lunar phases. So I notice when I'm like ready and I, again, I didn't plan for it. I like was sitting down and I was channeling and I was creating a spell and I was doing some big thing. And I noticed that like a few months in a row, when I got that urge, it was always on the uh, waning gibbous. And I was like, okay, that's a power moon for me. <laughs> so that's like a tiny, tiny little sliver of what you're talking about. So, okay, good. Yes. I'm going to do that. That yeah. sounds it is fun. I find that um, I have manifesto, my manifesto side really kicks in around the uh, new moon. And I am always, always just the new moon's my thing. I love it. It's like, and I've always assumed before I knew this, that it was because everybody else was quiet and I could actually feel me again. But my manifesting energy comes out it's like all of a sudden closing I'm like, up your aura do all this stuff yeah and it's just wow so that has been really insightful to me again me knowing me me understanding me it's a beautiful thing <laughs> it's a beautiful yeah. thing but yeah I, I really need to put something out on that I know other people have but I think there's a simpler way of doing it it doesn't need to be complicated um put it out there and say hey step one do this step two do that because yeah it's fun it's fun to experiment Mm. I, I look forward to it. Thank you for that. And I definitely will identify the the power times, the gates that will 
encourage me to be under a pile of kitties because that's really all that's a, the only place I ever want to be. No <laughs> offense. <laughs> so that's so, great. Yeah. Look forward so, to that. Yeah. Share with us um, a part of the work that you do. Um, I, I love, I love having these really deep spiritual discussions and, and it's always been in, in my history. I've, I've always had these discussions. It's mm-hmm. rare that somebody says something that I'm not already aware of. So when, when I talk to people such as yourself, I, I, I find myself going, wow, you know, because <laughs> it's like, oh, I've had that experience too. So can you just share with us some of your, you know, some of the work that you do and, and how that looks for you? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I love teaching. Teaching is, well, because what you get to do both, right? You get to investigate and then be projected upon and, and you know, um, and I, and then also I think the five energy really explains why I love to be with groups and be in, and just to, and I think that's reflector too, just sample everybody that's there. So teaching and, and I teach on, I don't know, just endless topics of spirituality. Um, mysticism is really how I've started to realize. I mean, some of it has to do with my ancestry as well. I have ancestry as a a Norse Celtic witch, you know, I'm descended from that energy. And, you know, so earth energy, earth magic. Uh, There's a few, you know, like a spirit dropped into my mind at some point or spoke through my mouth, prophet for Gaia. So literally being so intrinsically connected with the energy of Gaia that uh, when it comes to prophecies, when it comes to actual kind of like, not just prophecy doesn't just mean seeing the future it means teaching as well but it but when it does come to like forecasting or seeing how the energy is flowing that usually has to do with something that is pertinent to our planet um but yeah so the in specific i have like i have a platform that i call i've now changed the name of it to modern mystic and it's like a it's really low cost coaching portal that is delivers multimedia messages right to your phone. And so it's the idea behind it is the way that I deconditioned and reconditioned myself to be more me was is by daily practice by, you know, it's, and so that's what I'm delivering to them is inspiration or energy updates, teaching, whatever it is. And then we also meet once per month for a workshop that is again, like, I, it's so open and just like free form cutting edge if, is, is my intention with it. So it will be just like, sometimes I'll just get a title and description and then I show, and I'll be like, okay, tell me what I'm going to investigate this. I want to write an outline. And they're like, nope. And then it, I'll get there. And then that's when the information will show up. Like one time, uh, a couple months ago, it was Lemurian unicorns. And I was like, all right, then. <laughs> and so so we had a workshop on Lemurian unicorns. It was powerful, you know, it was amazing. And so that's one aspect. I'm also a hypnotherapist. So I actually teach and work for the hypnotherapy college from which I graduated and I help them with their media. And, but I also teach certain you know, different classes. I, I mean, that that's what, that's what we're doing here. I mean, the, the reflector is all open. Uh, that means in hypnotherapy, that means somnambulistic. I mean, we're capable, but it's really cool because we're also very capable of resisting the, it's like, we're an all or nothing, you know, we're, we are most easily conditioned, but at the same time, the system can reject conditioning, I think, because all of the centers get on board and go, you know, so we have this interesting position that I think makes us really, I just think everything about spirituality is basically hypnosis. Mm -hmm. We don't realize that everything about life is, the fight flight mechanism is you being in hypnosis and receiving negative suggestions into the subconscious mind, creating new negative beliefs. And, um, and then when we make positive shifts in our life, it's because we've allowed the critical mind to, um, relax so that we can drop suggestion, positive suggestions into the subconscious mind. And then we have new, you know, we shift the energy. That's just how it works for the, for the human. Um, I still do. I'm doing one-on-ones. It's like, I say still do because I go through periods where I'm mm-hmm. doing a lot of one-on-ones and then I have to, and then I don't, yeah. and I'm, I'm having an amazing time with them right now. And my one-on-ones, I call them empathic channeling now. That's yeah. again, another word that, cause it just, my whole energy brings in, the whole energy reflects back the highest good. And it always has a channeled message at the top. And, um, that kind of knocks out a bunch of their intentions right away because you know, it's that whole thing. How did you even know that? And I didn't know that. I mean, not, not that people are saying that, but you know, with the, they feel very known by the universe. If, if the universe or their higher self, however you look at it, speaks their concerns through 
this session. And, and then I do animal telepathy, which is amazing. Animals are our teachers. They are reflectors. They are our mirrors. And they're just magnificent. And it's just really, I'm always surprised by what animals can you know, communicate what they observe, even though I know them as intimately. And I, I yeah, always have, I guess, you know, as so far as an average human goes, but they just did, they shock me every time and they shock their humans because they'll tell me there's one, for example, they, they can give you packages of energies that show up as pictures or words or movies or feelings, you know, just all of it. But like one time a dog told me to tell his human, I have been her steed which is like, who says that word? I don't know if I've ever said that word. And, you know, <laughs> what was that? and the human, she starts crying, bawling. She says, um, I used to sit between him, that dog, and the other dog who had passed. I would sit between the two of them with my arms on them and say, these are my fine steeds. And the doggy knew that that would warm her heart, you know, and help her with her grief for the other doggy who had passed. Mm. So... Um, yeah, but I am a, I'm a writer as well. I love creating media. I love producing and I love con content creation is so fun. And I don't know, I do a lot of things, I guess. <laughs> you do. <laughs> right? <laughs> You're playing to your strengths and I love it. I'm really curious about hypnosis. It's something that's uh, come into my orbit over the last month um, mm -hmm. with reflectors, especially mm -hmm. like I've noticed a lot of chattering around that. Have you have you been able to, have you known that somebody is a reflector and had them uh, done a hypnosis session with them? Has it been difficult? It's not difficult. Well, it's not, it's, here's the thing. Um, I have, I have one student who is a, a reflect. Oh, uh, no, that's not true. I have one student, two students, and one of them is also a client. So uh, n no, here's the thing. Hypnosis is meditation is hypnosis. So, um, yes, when the mind is chattering and we don't have a practice where we know how to let that mind stand down and then be in the openness, mindfulness or whatever you want to say it, then it's harder to, to, you know, go into meditation. But meditation is hypnosis. Hypnosis is just not letting the conscious mind rule, not letting the logic, reasoning, analysis, willpower dominate mm -hmm. and being either in what we call mindful, but it's mindless, really, you know what I mean? Like letting the thinking calm and just it's, everybody is hypnotized several times per day, <clears throat> going into sleep and coming out of sleep, you're in hypnosis. That's why in psychism, it's called the thinning of the veil. The thinning of the veil is, a hip, is hypnosis, <clears throat> excuse me. But the thing is with hypnosis, um, to be facilitated or to be facil like when you're facilitated by a meditation teacher or track, you have to consent. You have to choose to follow the guidance and to relax into it. And that's going into hypnosis. So the, it does require, it requires the free will mm. of the sitter, if you will. But yeah, no, the, the two people that I know who are reflectors and have guided them. Oh, no. But they also had meditation practices. So they were willing and open to it and saw me as a teacher and as a, you know, their therapist. And so. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not more challenging. It, it's really doesn't, I don't think the types have make it more or less challenging so far as the aura types. It's really just to do with um, the awareness of your connection to the mind mm -hmm. or not. It also has to do with your suggestibility type, which is meaning um, if you are more of an inferential receiver of suggestions or a literal receiver of suggestions. Um, and then there's, I'm not going to, I'll just leave it at that. But for example, there's that if we just make it binary like that, my husband is more of the inferential. He has, he's a little bit literal, but the thing is, if he, if he is in a meditation, he's not very deep or he's going into it and they say, and now you will see the sun rising over the horizon. Like that's very direct and literal. And he's like, what do you mean? I will like it. It actually makes him fight it a little bit. Inferential would be like, and if you could imagine what it's like to have the sun rising over the horizon and you can choose to feel its warmth, that's inferential. And he's like, hmm, I can feel its warm if I want to. <laughs> you know? So that those are the, yeah. it's really more the tools of hypnosis rather than the, the, the energy type, I would yeah. say. Thank you for sharing that because it just, oh. I've been seeing some chatterings in some of the Facebook groups about, you know, 
a ref, other reflectors asking about that, you know, who's done quantum hypnosis, hmm. who, who can be hypnotized, who can't be. And, and it was just, it was like interesting. I'm like, hmm, I'm going to ask a hypnotherapist. And um, I've had, and I actually, I don't know if we were, if, the, if it's the same post, cause we're in a same uh, yeah. group <laughs> and someone was asking, no, actually maybe it's something else. I've had a, I like QHHT. I think Dolores Cannon's work is amazing. She was an amazing pioneer. Um, what I understand about QHHT though, is that it doesn't as well regard that suggestibility type that I was just talking about. And so it, and it's meant to be a one and done. Some people need to be conditioned to be able to follow a guide. They need to be able to trust. They need to sink yeah. into the relationship and to choose it for themselves. And um, also, so it doesn't regard that and it's meant to be a one and done. And so some people, if they think they can't be hypnotized, it's not that they just need to be conditioned to the process of being in the state, yeah. you know? It's interesting you say that. I did Life Between Lives a couple of years ago and um, the the lady that who who I went through, she worked with, she sent uh, voice packets. So I had to do this meditation for three weeks. And, oh, and now, now that yeah. you were saying that, now I understand a little bit more of why. And I, I thought it was because she needed me to trust her and feel safe because then mm -hmm. when I was there, it was like, oh, her, her voice and, and everything, I could relax because I'd, I'd done the work with her. That um, is, I've never heard of that as a technique. Usually therapists, the hypnotherapists do it in the sessions. And yeah, it like with my training, it depends. Like some of my clients, they come to me already warmed up. Maybe they've taken some of my classes. So they're just like, yeah, do get in my soul. I don't care. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I can go really fast. But if it's like, if you're cold with the therapist and, and maybe if you aren't, if a person, if we're considering they don't have a meditation practice, which is having a self-hypnosis practice, they're not conditioned to be able to go into the state, then usually it's done in the session and it takes a while to condition them in, in that, you know, and learning their suggestibility type. But basically she conditioned you by giving you the audio in advance. That's brilliant. Yeah. I, I have to take that. I'm going to take that little nugget to. Yeah. And it was <laughs> just, colleague. it was just a simple, um, I think it was about eight minute meditation that just, mm -hmm. it was a relaxation one yeah. and it was, yeah made sense and because it was easy because I was nervous because I'd never I'd never done anything like that before yeah. and I was of the opinion I can't be hypnotized yeah <laughs> well yeah, I was the, one of those oh, I can't be there's no such thing as can't be hypnotized you wouldn't yeah. sleep and then you wouldn't be a human the, the and you know when we're driving and then you miss the exit and then every time you're watching a movie and you're you start crying you've suspended your disbelief which is another way to say gone into hypnosis <laughs> <laughs> and you've accepted the story is somehow real and able to access you emotionally. Um, it's really, but it is about, it, I think people confuse able to be hypnotized with stage hypnotists who are picking people. If you've ever seen the stage hypnosis, they pick like a dozen people and they end up with two that they're working with, right? Yeah. And the, and they are able to pick, I, and I know how to pick this out too. They're able to see who's more somnambulistic, which means more highly suggestible, more in the middle range, and, hang, and who may be able to receive shock inductions. So that's a, and then this, you know, falling into it. And that's, that's not the only kind of hypnosis. Not everyone will receive that. <laughs> that is a rarer thing for someone to be that highly suggestible, wow. but it's about, you know, it, it, but it doesn't have to do with energy type, really. It has to do with what's going on with the mind, I would say. And the suggestibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Just got a big lesson right there. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> it's good fun to talk about these random things. You never know where we're going to end up. Yeah, I know. I love it. So as a part of your human design journey, what have been some of the hardest things for you to do? Mm. <laughs> everything <laughs> everything <laughs> um what's been hard well i guess what's hard is actually this came up in one of our in our group that we both are in our facebook group someone was saying you know it doesn't really matter because no one really cares about being a reflector <laughs> no one wants to hear what you're reflecting and i was like well i don't know if i'm ever like feeling like, oh, they should listen to me because I'm a reflector, then I'm probably in my not self theme. And I do have people, I and mean, this person was saying also like, because most people don't know about human design. And I'm like, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm, I work with a bunch of spiritual weirdos and they do know about it and they still don't, they can't relate to it, you know, unless they happen to be a reader. And I have one friend who's a projector and a reader. And so she gets, 
she understands it, but most people, even if they know about it, they aren't really. So it's, it's this weird, it's navigating how to, how to work with the conditioned field without being, oh my gosh, it just reminds me of the, what they used to say in the Christian church. We are in the world, but we're not of it. Or I don't even remember how they said it, but you know what I mean? Like just navigating that sometimes I've got to, I got to be okay with the fact that I've run out of energy or, you know, all, all best laid plans, but I can't do it. Um, and I just, I have to be okay with that. But then I kind of like want to weave, maybe that's the five energy wants to weave a something as a presentation that will protect me and not erode the way that I'm able to work with other people. And it's not, honestly, it's genuinely, I know people, I hear people talking about the five and saying like, you know, you can be so egotistical, but it's really not. It's so, like I said, it's an, it's a commodity. And so I don't want to let anything that I am experiencing to be a stumbling block for someone else that I'm meant to be helping. And so, and also there's nothing wrong with having privacy, you know, even in nature, nature will deceive in order to create privacy, but it's not hurting the other. It's actually helping the situation, you know? So I guess it's, yeah, it's just a figuring out how to work with the field, the the condition field without succumbing to it, identifying to it. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. And and I love that you've just you've you've just surrendered, you know, to your open centers and allowed it to manifest what has become of your beautiful business. Because mm-hmm. without you having to surrender, without you surrendering that and going through that, that you, what you went through when you had that awakening, you wouldn't be where you are now. You wouldn't be as open and it's, it's, I guess it's a a true testament to embrace our openness and our sensitivity because it brings us these beautiful gifts and your intuition. You know, I mentioned Jean Key 19, the shadow is codependency. The gift is sensitivity and the city is interdependent. Well, it's sacrifice, but the way he explains sacrifice is really interdependent. So it's like codependence to independence, to interdependence. Yeah. And uh, I think that's that's why I'm like, I don't even know. I think everybody who's a reflector has Gene Key 19 <laughs> really active because that's what it's about. The sensitivity to understand what is needed and then to be able to sacrifice the, 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 the selfish goals, the lower goals, the way that you come into a partnership and you sacrifice for the greater good. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I've just, I'm trying to not do that kicking and screaming as much. And, <laughs> but I med- I, I meditate on that with five one. It's so interesting because with five ones or fives, especially we have the transpersonal karma and we give karma everywhere we go, which when I first heard that as, you know, the disappointment set in, and I was like, what am I a shit fairy? I give karma. What, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, I I get it. I get it. Uh, But I think, again, it's just something that (laughs) the reflector is there being a transformer, a transmitter and a transformer. Yeah. But just think of the moon. Like, you know, then if we get to the, she's the only one and she's so beautiful and she, she's one. Did you know that she is one, one hundredth the mass of the earth? One, one percent. Oh, I did not know that. I know. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> you can't write this. <laughs> one one hundredth the mass of the of the earth, and she pulls and pushes the waters yeah. of the whole planet in our bodies, as well as obviously the oceans. And it actually the the, the magnetism actually affects the the earth, the um you know the soil as well. It's just less perceptible because it's so much more so much denser. So, I mean, and, and did you think how everybody's projecting what they're projecting onto the moon and how much everybody loves the moon? Who doesn't love the moon? It's like saying, I don't like music. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're right. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say, I don't like the moon. <laughs> that, not in this life. No, that's not yeah. going to happen. I'm not going to hear that. <laughs> I love just, that. Uh, that is so cool. That yeah. is so cool. Yeah, one one hundred. And it's just, I love how you've worded that. It's just perfect. Mm-hmm. It's so wild. I know when I read that, I was just reading it on some kind of crusty astronomy website. You know what I mean? Like I was investigating and I was like, one one hundredth is one percent. 
and 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 suddenly we've all listened to this gong. <laughs> all the reflectors around the world will be listening to this and going boom. That's it. Yeah. It'll pop up everywhere now. You'll see it. It'll be all over your feed in the next yeah, few weeks. <laughs> it's getting in the neutrino field now. That's right. Yeah. And but it was so great. Then you get to be that satellite, and you know what I mean. Like I used to. I told you I was a bartender, and. And if you were, if you're a bartender or you're an ER nurse or doctor, you know that that full moon <laughs> means something. You could be, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. I, and that was like when I was bartending, I was like, okay, but it's a full moon, so we need to close 15 minutes earlier tonight. They're like, what are you talking about? Because there's also something about later in the night, people start to get more, um, you know, edgy. out of edgy. Yeah, I guess. So, yeah, there. I mean, you can't deny it. You just can't deny. It. So we we we're there to be that, and that's why I thank you for the suggestion about about um, looking at the gates because, I mean, that's it's just it's it's a weird, it's weird to say, but it's a fact. It's just it's mm -hmm. like a fact that it's we respond in that way, and we impact and we amplify in that in that way. Yeah, yeah. And it's but it's like a lot of times our little secret, right? Because the moon doesn't say, "Ha ha, I showed you, I knew it." <laughs> help she's no longer the moon then <laughs> so funny so funny oh this has been such an amazing chat trisha thank you we could just keep going it always happens this is what we do we just we just get we get chatting and we go off on tangents and it's just so wonderful how can people reach out to you how can they find you can you please share your details sure uh well i my website is trisha car charm c-h-a-r-m and my name is t-r-i-c-i-a-c-a-r-r and there that, you know, there's everything is there. Um, my podcast, as you mentioned, thank you so much, is Charmed Life with Trisha Carr. You can find it by adding my name to it. And I have a YouTube channel. Just look for my name. And Instagram at Trisha Carr Charm. Um, yeah, those are the main things. And then on my website, you know, I'm doing sessions right now as we're recording this. And I may be for a little bit longer. I may go in moratorium again for a little bit or sabbatical. But um, I, I usually... I feel like I'm because there's a new whole exciting thing going on with my session. So I might be able to find that either animal communication or hypnosis or the uh, channeling session, which is like empathic channeling of your blueprint of your soul blueprint. Oh, well, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you yeah. so, so, so very much for, for um, finally getting here and having this chat with us and sharing your beautiful wisdom. Do you have anything else that you'd like to share to our beautiful reflector community? Um, you are you are worth diving into your own energy knowing your native land even though it feels sometimes like i don't have a native land i mean native land meaning like if you didn't you know if you have a native land if you have your home and you didn't have any walls on it and you didn't have a boundary line or a fence then you couldn't really complain if somebody had it was intruding because you wouldn't be able to say there's the wall and you don't even know what you feel like when you're so open in that way and so that's why you need to spend time in your own and pursuing your own energy you actually have your own energy <laughs> even though it seems like you don't and not only are you worth it but we need the the purity of your luminescence and your you the uniqueness of your luminescence and so not just once per day but at least once per day be in your own energy purely thank you so beautiful <laughs> Mm, I agree. Thank you, beautiful soul. We'll wrap Thank this you. up and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Thank you, Annie. It's been wonderful. <laughs>